Instead, we have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves and each other. Uh, I'm Georgia Kelly, the director of the Praxis Peace Institute, and this is one of our educational events that we're very happy to be hosting. Uh, and for those of you who are new to Praxis, I just want to say a few words about our organization, which is a nonprofit peace education 501c3 organization that was founded about nine and a half years ago. And some of our work includes uh, workshops in conflict resolution and communication. We have speaker events like today that are educational events. We have a biannual conference. We just had our, our most recent one last October here in venues around the plaza in October uh, 2009. And that was called the Economics of Peace. So every conference we have a different theme that relates to peace or how we will get there. We don't have any naive uh, pretensions about peace. We're really looking at the, at the long and, and uh, considered road, road to peace. So economics was the area that we most recently took on. Another thing we do is we've had seminar tours to the Mondragon cooperatives in Spain. We had one in 2008, and we will have another one in September this year. And these are five-day workshops that, where people can learn about the, um, the workings of the largest consortium, consortium of worker-owned businesses in the world. They have 120 businesses that are owned by workers, democratically run. And this is a phenomenal opportunity uh, because they don't have single people go and learn about it. You have to go in organized groups. So if you're interested in that, we have brochures in the back. Um, I think it was on the table as you came in where you can pick those up or you can speak to me after the event. The other thing we do is we have a monthly book club for members. So I would like to encourage those of you who are not members of Praxis to sign up or renew your membership because this is what enables us to continue doing programs like today's. So I feel honored today to introduce someone who I actually helped get on a radio show 15 years ago when I was working with Jerry Brown and he had his We the People radio show running out of Oakland. And at that time, Jeremy Rifkin had just um, uh, written The End of Work, which is very appropriate for today as well as the new book that he's written, The Empathic Civilization. I've read a few of his books, and most recently Empathic Civilization, which I completed all 600 plus pages of. And when I got the book, I thought, how am I ever going to finish this before he arrives? But I set that goal, this I have to do. And I opened it up and started reading, and I realized I didn't look up until I was on page 81. So I thought, this is going to be a fast read. Well, 600 pages is never a fast read, but it was very entertaining. I mean, I've learned a lot from it. I think what Jeremy Rifkin does in this book is he traces the evolution of empathy through history, philosophy, religion, culture, all these different areas that bring it all together in a way that I've never seen anyone do before. So it's very impressive and, and it's uh, and also encouraging and hopeful, uh, as well as he doesn't shy away from pointing out the pitfalls, which I think is important. Uh, some of the, the things that have been said about Jerry, Jeremy Rifkin, uh, the New York Times affirms that, quote, many in the scholarly, religious, and political fields praise Jeremy Rifkin for a willingness to think big, raise controversial questions, and serve as a social and ethical prophet. The Utney Reader, and the founder of the Utney Reader was here at our conference a few months ago, describes him as one of the leading big picture thinkers of our day. And the Washington Post, quote, Rifkin poses real questions that we've spent too little time thinking about, unquote. And one of those questions is addressed by this quote from, uh, well, actually, I think I'll read the quote last, because I wanted to tell you that he's been an advisor to the European Union, heads of state around the world. He has advised governments of France, Germany, Portugal, and Slovenia during their respective European Council presidencies on issues related to the economy, climate change, and energy security. Um, for those of us who have spent time in Europe, we, we can not help but notice the difference and how empathy has already evolved in that region of the world. So one of the quotes that I want to take from this book before I bring Jeremy Rifkin up here, which touched me deeply, and I think it gives us a lot to think about. Quote, empathy maturity, right there, there's a concept. Empathy maturity is particularly correlated with critical thinking. The ability to entertain conflicting feelings and thoughts, be comfortable with ambiguity, 
approach problems from a number of perspectives, and listen to another points of view, are essential emotional building blocks to engage in critical thinking. Please welcome Jeremy Rifkin.